Ah, uh, g'day YouTube. Well, we're here at the beginning of a gliding contest. Of course, it's the beginning of a gliding contest. It's raining. Well, the last video I posted, we're flying around in the mountains. One comment said, the lack of nearby outlanding opportunities would make me pretty nervous. And another said, if you had to put down in that area, you'd have a very long walk out and probably never recover the glider. So let's dive into how we stay safe in the mountains and how we actually do usually have somewhere to safe to land. So we've got a great rule of thumb for how far we can glide. That is a thousand feet for every 10 kilometers of gliding. It's assuming no wind. So you can imagine from 10,000 feet above the ground, we can glide up to 100 kilometers, even more. Obviously, if there's mountains in the way, you can't glide through them. So here in Omarama, there are a lot of airstrips around. And here's a, here's a quick map of all the airstrips that we have available to us. Almost every single valley has at least one airstrip in it. There are a couple of exceptions, and we're very careful about not getting low in those valleys. Let's have a look at a couple of screenshots from the last video, and we'll show you where the landouts are in those scenes. So let's have a look at Lake Hawea. There's two options in this photo. The first is the Dingle, which is a quite a well-known landing spot. And if you get caught in that valley, you can fly down the valley and end up at this airstrip. The only issue with it, it's a little tricky to get a car in there. In fact, I think it's, you can't get a car in there. So if you land in there, you're gonna need a tow plane to get out. Across the lake is another airstrip that is drivable, so you can drive around to it, and you can probably aerotow off that as well. So I think there might be some paddocks, but anyway, they're good paddocks you can land in. This next shot is deep in the mountains, passing Mount Aspiring. Now there's actually no landouts in this shot of this video. So just behind us in this shot, out the other wing, is a suitable landing field. So here's one that I probably made sound a bit more dramatic than it was, and I got a bit below the tops. What were my options? I was gonna get stuck in this valley. How would I get out? And the answer is, I just fly down the valley, keep going, and you'd end up at quite a few suitable land out options. You gotta keep in mind, we're six and a half thousand feet here. We can glide to the, the airfields. They're about a thousand feet above the sea level. So we've got about four and a half thousand feet of glide to those airstrips. You know, you can lose that in the mountains, and if you've got you could get into trouble if you're not careful, but this particular day, we're not being dumped, there's no wave, it's quite safe to just fly down the valley, we'll be able to fly right down to the other end of the valley, no problems. Some of the airstrips are good enough to actually land a tow plane on and take off with the glider. Some of them are not, but they're safe to land at if we need to, and you can then bring a trailer in to retrieve them. But there are quite a few around this area that are actually not aerotowable, and you can't get road access to. You can land safely at them, but you'll have to get a helicopter to come and get you out, and probably another helicopter to actually retrieve the glider. We'll actually helicopter a glider trailer into where the glider's landed, put the glider in the box, and then helicopter the whole thing out again. Now, of course, this costs quite a lot of money. We try not to do that, obviously. While flying out of Canterbury, there's a number there's a whole valley where all the airstrips you can land it safely, but you won't be getting out of there with the glider without using a helicopter. So the key thing is to be aware of those airstrips. You know, have them as emergency backups. So if you get dumped unexpectedly by a wave wind, for example, that is a last resort option. So in the North Island, we mainly use uh, paddocks and farmers fields to land in. And we can pretty much choose any field that we can see as, as long as it's big enough and is clear of stock, not too sloped, we can land at it quite happily. Unfortunately in the South Island, most of the valleys and the flat areas are made from rivers. And that means there are rocks and stones and you really don't want to hit one going into a paddock. More recently there's been a lot of dairy farming in this area and they actually roll the paddock, uh, remove any large stones because cows don't like walking on them either. So my glider's got a little turbo engine. Does that mean I don't need to worry about airstrips? The answer is no. Unfortunately, our engines are not 100% reliable. There's always a chance you forget to put the fuel on or 
fumble around or something breaks or a hose breaks or something goes wrong with the engine and it won't actually work. So if I'm uh, getting low in the mountains I'll always try and get to a good safe landing area first before I get the engine out. Once you get the engine out it's like pulling the brakes open. So you want to make sure you've got somewhere safe to land nice and close to you within gliding range and you can do a circuit and land like normal if it doesn't work. Am I constantly worried about landing in the mountains? And the answer to that is no. We generally have a pretty good idea whether or not things are working. And things can change very quickly. But as long as you've always got somewhere in mind where to go if things turn to custard, you'll be okay. So if I'm in the wave at 10 to 20,000 feet, generally I'm not too worried about land out options. Once you get below 10,000 feet and you start getting into the mountains, you need to be a lot more careful not to get caught in a valley where there aren't any land out options. We have a database of landing strips in our flight computers and they also publish a book of nearby landing strips here in Omerima. We really do take time to learn all the airstrips before we go out flying. And once you've been flying here for a while, you get to learn key airstrips and places to land that are nice safe options that you can easily get an aero to retrieve and you tend to use them as your base when you're over in that area. Some airstrips can be very hard to see from the air, so a lot of them just look like dirt paddocks, and the airstrip is sort of in the middle of this paddock, and they can be quite hard to spot at times. So here's a field where we uh, went and retrieved some gliders that needed to land out in the mountains because Springfield was all clagged in with cloud. Now when we turned up we were looking around for these gliders in the paddocks and we couldn't find them. And then we got a phone call. They were flying still. They were wanting us to check out the paddocks before they land in them just to make sure they're clear of rocks and things. And so I was able to film the ash and a discus 2 landing in a mountain field and this is a well-known airstrip a pre-planned area to land in called castle hill and it's a great emergency option if you can't get back to the airfield for some reason so these guys knew about this field they waited till we arrived to check that the field was okay which obviously is not normally an option and then they proceeded to land uphill quite safely so i hope that helps I hope you can see how we really do do a lot of preparation and planning to make sure we know where the airstrips are and where we're going to land if we need to. And you've got to be prepared for the unexpected. If you hit heavy sink, which is quite common in the mountains, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go?